What is going on my friends? Welcome back to the channel. If this is your first time tuning in, thank you very much. My name is Blaine Roberts, owner and operator of Panhandle Salt Beach Fishing. We're running beach fishing guides at Perdido Key, Pensacola, Orange Beach, and Gold Shores, Alabama. We also offer some tailored surf fishing lessons. So if you're wanting to get into this thing or just tighten up on some skills you already have, we do have a package for you. We work with a handful of sponsors that offer you guys discounts. Links to those websites are in the description of this video. We are out here this morning with Tony Feggi, the owner and operator of Fish Gum. If you do not know about Fish Gum, you've been living under the rock in the surf fishing world. It is a synthetic bait and it's very potent, very powerful, very effective. If you're just getting into surf fishing, you're not quite sure how to gather sand fleas, things like that. Fish Gum is a great starter bait, guys. It comes in a variety of different colors, very effective. You can also use it to double up. So a lot of times I'll put some fresh dead shrimp on the hook, snip a little piece of this off and then back it up on that shrimp. It'll do two things. It'll do two things. It'll hold your bait on better with the cast. Also, it acts as a backup. If you have crabs or bait fish out there that pick your shrimp off, you're just not sitting out there naked. That fish gum will still be holding strong. So obviously we are fishing with this this morning, fresh dead, and I'll probably rake for some fleas. I had an absolutely stellar day yesterday. Yesterday afternoon, I was one shy of a limit. The bite wasn't coming fast, right? I'd get one school by, I'd get one or two in, maybe an hour, 45 minutes to an hour later, another school would come by, and that's pretty normal for the beginning of the run. You're not getting this mass number of schools just piling in one after the other. The bites seemed to be infrequent but they were all keepers with two big ones, man. Two big ones at 15, 16 inches to the fourth. That is what we're looking for this time of year, guys. March, April is our spring run, and then October, November is our fall run. Here in the Panhandle, those are prime months for Pompano fishing, and if you're planning a vacation, those are prime months for vacation. For many reasons, the Pompano run, the weather, and the beaches aren't so crowded, meaning a lot of vacationers come here in the summer, so we get thousands and thousands of beachgoers on the beach and it's kind of hard to pick off spots. You gotta get out here really early. Spring and fall, if you're planning vacations to the Panhandle, those are prime seasons. We are going on about seven, eight trips now with that same hook float. Still holding strong. I've caught seven, eight fish on it. I got some new ones tied on, but I just kind of want to see how long this guy will last. We're in the testing process with these. And so far, so good. And we're gonna put one to the bar, guys. This will be my first official sling with the 13-3 Ninja Dagger Bomber. I got a 5,000 series on it. I just freshly spooled it with 20 pound true braid. I believe this is gonna be a great matchup here. This rod actually has got a weighted butt. So I need to talk to Matt Poole and figure out just how to operate this. But this is supposed to level out whatever reel you're using. Great advantage. From what I understand, it doesn't necessarily like increase casting distance or anything like that. Just more the feel of the rod, a more smoother cast, which will then probably increase casting distance. All right, check my drag. Got that drag super tight. I'm gonna tighten it back down for the cast. And then loosen her back up. This thing's a monster, man. It just feels big in your hand. I'm afraid I might overcast a bar. My goodness. Fred, what you doing? Oh, I might have one on already. A little whiting rod here. This guy's on, for sure. 
Up close, Tony. There he is. There he is. What do we got? So we got fish in the area. There we go. Up close. <laughs> Tony, with the runt, baby. We're catching it. Yeah, we're picking off whiting up close. This is where I got that donkey whiting the other day. I hope I get one. Yep. <laughs> That's good. That's drum bait. <laughs> so, so, Tony, Tony screamed at me, scared me. <laughs> oh yeah, there he is. There he is. He don't want to come up. All right. Oh, just got hit. I'm moving away from my neighbor here. Obviously, he's fishing cut bait. He just crossed two of my lines. So, instead of sitting here and arguing with him, just move over. I'd like to point out that I was here first this morning. This gentleman decided to camp out next to me, like right next to me, which happens, right? It's a free beach, it's okay. There's no boundaries. But there is ethics. You always want to give your neighbor some space, guys. Because situations like that will happen. Especially if you're not out here a lot. You really are trying to figure this thing out. You know, you miss things like, you know, walking with your line, following your line. To not cross up your own lines. Or the guy next to you. But he'll figure it out as it goes. I might be on down there. I think I am. I've been down there screwing off with Phil and Tony. I think I got a freaking fish on. <sighs> oh yeah, dude, this is way down the beach, guys. Way down the beach, man. This could be a pompano, guys. This could be a pompano. I don't even think he knows he's hooked. Let's try to get some tension on him. There he is. Oh yeah, that's a pompano. That's a pompano. Yes. He had ran and he was hiding on his lip. There he is. <laughs> on that naked rig, man. Yo! In the gut with a, a naked rig. There we go, baby. In the gut, guys, on that naked rig, that naked double drop. I had a hunch. I got rid of floats. I got rid of beads. I slung that guy out there, and that's what it hit. Fish gum and fresh dead shrimp. We're going to give that guy to Tony. I got five at the house from yesterday. I'll let Tony take one home. You guys remember Phil? The salt squatch? What's up, guys? <laughs> It's been a <laughs> to, while. To his true skunk ape nature, he has been in hiding. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Phil's a busy man, guys. He is out fishing with us today. It's great to see him. I think I got another one on. I do. They're running in and hiding on the lip, guys. There he is. There he is. There's another one. There's another one, guys. Yeah. They're running in and hiding on the lip, man. This is what they were doing to me yesterday. They were darting in and out. Oh, they're so fun this time of year, man. So fun this time. Yo! So fun this time of year. On the float hook, baby. On the float hook. Now things are fired up, guys. Let's get into it. There we go. There we go. There we go, baby. They're on now. 
they're on now. There we go. Oh, that's a good one. That's a good one. Oh my goodness. Oh, that's not a pop at all. That's not a poppin' No. No. tackle hook float guys this hook float this piece of tackle has absolutely been slaying it for me day after day guys catching multiple species that's a beach fish in florida <laughs> pro, surf, pro surf, surf tackle surf pro tackle, surf pro tackle. <laughs> yep what a great little hook set right there that thing ain't coming out unbelievable good job dude all right bill yes, sir. yeah baby Where's he at, Bill? All right, I'm on zero. You're at zero? You're at about 34, 34 to the nose. 34. My original float hook has <laughs> finally met its maker, guys. The 34 inch black drum. That hook lasted weeks. So impressed with that tackle, guys. It's catching everything, man. What color was that one? The purple? We'll do it again. Let's get a fresh one on, baby. That's a low. I'm tying them high and low. I got my bags marked so I know which ones, so I know which is which. So that was a low purple. I'll tie that right back on. Purple and pink, actually. A little purple frisky bead there. Look at these pumps. Yeah, baby. What is this? That's some pumps from yesterday. Nice. Yeah. What are you doing with them? I'm gonna eat them. Good. <laughs> you should eat them. Guys, I am going to make something to eat real quick and we're going to get these fish cleaned up. The five pompano I've had 
chilling in the cooler overnight. I've had them packed down with ice though, guys. Got to knead the dough, slap it. Like you're patty in the burger. Flatten that guy out. Got a hot pan going over here with some butter. The Colombian Arepa, baby. Oh, yeah. Where's my family?
great morning out there on the beach, guys, with Tony and Phil. And it is time for round two. The afternoon, I believe the afternoon bite's gonna be even better. Our winds shifted to the south, so we got a south push. Not a lot, that like eight, nine mile an hour. And I got thunder with me because he needs to get some time in for the upcoming tournament. He says he's gonna fish it. We got like three days left until registration closes. So I kind of wanted to get him out here, see how interested he really is before I spend the money signing him up. And I am talking about our tournament, the Pompano Showdown. We do have a kids division. It's 15 years and for kids it's 15 years old or younger. I figure if they can't drive, <laughs> they can't get to their can't get to the beast themselves. So that's what I'm calling kids. We're gonna start Thunder off here with the Surf Pro Tackle Creature Rig. He liked this one. So we strapped that one on. Might have had it. I've had this in my cooler since this morning. It's starting to lose its luster. We're gonna tip it with some fish gum. Eh, I don't know how long that's gonna last. Got a south wind, got a little chop, so I got a little two ounce red fin fishing Spudnik on there. And we're gonna keep him fairly close. Shake my drag, let's loosen that just a bit. There's been some drum around. I don't want him to lose his rod. All right. First rod out. Got it right before the gut there. It's a good little spot for him. Then for his second, you know I'm going with the hook float, Surf Pro Tackle. Add a little translucent bead there. I've been matching my bead to my float, but there's something about those translucent beads. I have a lot of success with them. So I'm strapping that on his other one, another eight foot six here. This is mine, I use this for slinging lures into the surf, guys. Jacks, reds, Spanish, blues, things like that. So I got a 3,500 slammer on it because I want that extra drag capacity, but not a big reel. I'm casting this thing over and over again. So to have a big reel on it would wear me out. But today, we're gonna set rig fish with it. Put that one a little bit closer in. Got my 11 foot dagger out. I hadn't had this rod out probably two or three months, man. So I noticed it had a lot of pollen on it and stuff from just hanging in the garage. So I wanted to get it out, dust it off, get that reel moving, all the gears working. Nothing worse than you can do to your equipment, guys, is A, not rinsing it off after every use, and then B, just letting it sit. You need to get them out every once in a while, sling them out, get all those gears working in the reels. So that's what we're doing today. I'll put this first one out there by the bar. My second setup, I do have the creature. This is right out of the package. I haven't retied this or anything. This is exactly how it would come from Surf Pro Tackle. Double drop, 20 pound fluorocarbon. I got some fresh dead fish gum, three ounce frisky Spudnik on this. And I'm gonna sling this one to the bar. I'm trying to see about eliminating double drops altogether. I got a way I've been tying my single drops where I have one high and one low. 
I got them marked on the packaging so I know which, which is which, like pulling out of my bag. Obviously I can look at it and tell, but just for a quick reference when I'm digging through my rig bag, but I wanted to put that double drop out deep because I'm in right in that gut. That's the deepest part of the water leading up to the sandbar. So I really don't know if they're running down low, forging off the bottom, or are they running high? So that's the benefit of a double drop out there in the deeper water. You can target two different zones. Thunder. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Get him, buddy. That's a nine footer. All right. You know what to do. Get him in. It's going to be some good practice. You got to fight that guy. Get him. Pay attention. Keep your line tight. All right. All right. Is he fighting back on you? All right. I think he is too. Come on. Here, stop, stop walking backwards. Walk back up towards the shore and reel at the same time. All right. All right, walk this way. He's running to the side on you. Try to get in front of him. All right, keep him tight. Keep him tight. Uh, all right, he don't want to come up. We're crossed up here. Come on. Oh. oh, come on, keep it reeling. Keep it tight. Come on. Come on, he's right there, Thunder, get him. Come on. Oh, hold on, we're still crossed up. There he is, there he is, keep coming. Keep, yeah, buddy. Pompano, you got him, dude. I think so. Oh man, we're all kind of crossed up. I gotta teach you about going around lines. All right, let's get this situated. We're not showing the people the fish. Man, that was a big fish, bro. Cameraman. Proud moment, guys. He's starting to get it. Up until this point, when Thunder's been out here fishing, he's always still playing. Like when the fish is on the end, he's playing and like he's got a whole movie going on in his head, I'm sure. So I'm really trying to get him to like calm down and pay attention to what he's doing, keeping the tension on the line, being aware of the other lines right or left of him, and really get him like landing these fish 100% by itself like without any coaching okay 14 inches no i don't think he's quite 14 he's right at 12. oh so i thought that's a keeper dude you want to keep him mm, yes all right we might, win. we might win with that oh no we're not in the tournament right now we're just practicing that's the that's the eight foot six buddy that's a big one come on 
Come on, baby. Oh, that's a pompano, dude. I don't know if you're gonna be able to handle that, baby. Come on. On the eight foot six. Come on. Listen, pay attention to what you're doing, all right? You gotta watch out for these other lines. So walk underneath this line here. Go, underneath it. All right. Okay, stop, stop. Get some tension on him. Get some tension on him, reel him. All right, come on. Walk under this one. Go ahead. There you go. Keep him going. He's taking you down the beach. Walk under that one too. All right. Now you got, you cleared all the lines, baby. Now just fight him in. All right, hold on, hold on, stop. Reel down and pull up. Pull up, reel down. Stop reeling, pull up. There he is, he's right there. Reel down and pull up. Come on, reel down and pull up. You got him. He's right there. We're crossed up again. Man, they keep crossing us up. Ugh. Come on. I got him. Where's he at? There he is. I got him. That's a big one, Thunder. That's a big one, dude. <laughs> Hold on a second. Oh my goodness, Thunder. This is a big one, dude. Yeah, they like to tangle us up, right? Yeah. Thunder, that's a tank. Hold on a second. Let me see if I can get this undone real quick. This guy's about, this guy's three pounds at least, Thunder. There we go. Yes. That's a three pounder, dude. Thunder, that's a three pounder. Watch those other lines. Do you see those other lines moving? Where? Okay, exactly. Man, got chaos. All right, there. No, come help me. Come help me. Thunder, this is a big fish. Can't believe I caught that. But there's definitely bigger fish than that. Right? I can't believe I caught that. Oh, oh. All right, watch out. No, no, no. Go behind me. Thunder, that's a tournament winner, bro. If it was... We can't keep it. It's too late. I mean, it's too early. But if we were fishing a tournament, we would keep this one. That guy's two and a half pounds, man. Let's let him... Let's let him go. Now, if I could get him... To just stop crossing up lines, we'd be okay. Got that guy on the watermelon float hook. Surf Pro Tackle. Fish gum and fresh dead. Guys, we're about to have a race. Who do you think is going to win? Um, if you think Blaine will win, leave a like. If you think I will win, win subscribe. Pulled out a slab dab or out of someone's butt. Yeah. <laughs> it might be you guys, but you don't know. <laughs> <laughs>